Now, this Venus number, as I explained earlier, is slightly different to the, the, the uh, Sun Shield number. And that's because if we look at Venus here, the morning star, it's, it's rising. So as the, the sun rises that morning, we will see Venus on the right. But 112 days later from the Earth, Venus will actually be on this side of the sun. So the only time we'll see it is when it sets in the east. And then we'll see it left behind as a bright evening star. And I, when I went to Guadalajara, I saw this shrine in the temple there. And of course, Jesus said in St. John, I have said to you that I will go away and come unto you again. I, Jesus, am the bright and shining morning star. And there we see Jesus with Joseph and Mary with the, the twin planets, Venus, as a morning star and an evening star with a bright star of Bethlehem above on his head. Now, once I started to decode all this stuff, I had another look at the carving on the lid, and it, it became quite clear that these people were geniuses. Of course, it was easy to just put down the sun in this design, and two dragons, which represents the sun, and a woman being licked by the sun god here for fertility. There we have the sun god in the middle of the Aztec calendar, and we also have carvings in Mexico of the sun is trying to tell us that the sun was killing us. The sun's rays was causing the babies here to die. And the babies had a circle on their chest representing the sun. Solar babies are here. So we have babies and we have the sun which was killing the babies because of lack of fertility and because of x-rays. And the sun god, his tongue's out and he's licking the female to make her more, fer more fertile. So yes, clearly we could have a picture like that. We'll be taking a break in just about 10 minutes. I just want to show you one of the miracles before you have your whatever. The next picture we could say, we could say, this is, I haven't even started yet, we could say that this particular picture, if we colour in different parts of that design, represents the age of water by this lady here, Chalchi Whitliqui. She was a goddess of water who wore a jade skirt. So maybe this is, just maybe, maybe this is Chalchi Whitliqui in the bathtub, holding a lily, lily leaf in her left hand. Well, if that's Chalchi Whitliqui, the goddess of water, who ruled the age of water for 3,740 years before the world came to an end because of the flood, maybe this eagle could represent the, the Ekatl, the god of wind when the world was destroyed by hurricanes. And maybe this one, this stylized representation, could represent Claloc. There's lots of carvings like this in, in Central America with his distinctive teeth and his ears and so on. He was the god of rain, but volcanic rain, and when the world was destroyed through volcanic eruptions. And as we've already seen, this could be the sun god when the world was destroyed by the sunspot cycle. And if we look at Mayan mythology, Perhaps the lid tells us other stories of where we go when we die. One of the stories says that there's a place of, uh, called Tamawanchan where the babies go when they die. So maybe this area here on the lid represents Tamawanchan, the place where dead babies go when they die. Maybe this area represents Adam and Eve. Of course, one of them's missing. So that's not so certain. Uh, there are some corn seeds down here, so the archaeologists tell us. Maybe those corn seeds represent the paradise called Chincalco. That's where women went who died in childbirth. Perhaps this is a woman dying in childbirth going to that paradise. So this particular picture tells us about all of the other paradises. Now, the Popol Vuh, the book of the Maya, it begins and ends with the same words. The Popol Vuh, the original Bible, as it is called, cannot be seen anymore. The book was written long ago, but now it is hidden to the searcher and to the thinker. A very cryptic beginning. And it says exactly the same thing on the end. The Popol Vuh, as it is called, cannot be seen anymore. The original book was written long ago, but now its sight is hidden for the searcher and the thinker. Now, I want to just briefly do an experiment with you to show you how the brain works. 
If I asked you a question, that's a picture, a jigsaw puzzle picture of an English country garden. It's not very clear because the projector's awful. And I said to you, what's so unusual about that picture, or different, or special? What would you say to me? Well, the brain doesn't like questions like that, because right now it's going one way, it's saying, what's he talking about? What is, what's so special? I, I don't understand the question. What does he mean? Let me ask you another question. Here is a picture of an English country garden. What's so special about that picture? Pictures are missing. <laughs> the pieces are missing. Aren't you clever? You don't know how clever you are. Because you didn't see what was there. You can only see what's not there. You don't see me. You see somebody who's too tall or too short or too fat or too thin. Or who talks too fast or who talks too slowly. You don't see your son or your daughter. You say, why can't you wash the dishes and help your mother? Why can't you cut the grass and help your father? We only ever see the bits that are missing. So I want to leave all of this information so that when I come back in 3,000 years' time, I can find it again. So how am I going to do it? When I went to Palenque, I said to the, gu the guide, where are the two pieces off the corners? He said, I'd never noticed. <laughs> and I can understand why, because they, this is so big they can't get it out of the pyramid. But the archaeologists are really switched on. They've made a replica in the museum, it's around the corner. But they fixed the corners. Because <laughs> they weren't there. So if you go to the museum in Palenque, You'll see a fiberglass model of this, just a hundred yards from the pyramid, and the corners are perfect. But when you go into the pyramid, you'll see they're missing. What's not there is there, and what is there is missing, because I understand the Mayas. Now, this is, where, this is why now you'll understand my frustration with this projector in a few minutes. If we look at the pattern on the corner there, this is, the board, this is lid, I call it the lid of Palenque. It's grey now because if it's not grey, the black lines interfere with the picture, so I had to turn them grey on the computer. Without the computer in uh, 1985 and the colour photocopier, none of this work would have been possible. And I said to myself, if they're not missing, I'll just put those on top of each other to, just to show you that I'm not cheating. There's nothing there. I just colored in a few colors and laid them on top of each other for now. But what I want you to look at is the corners right now. This corner, we've got a sort of star shape made up out of dots. And this one, we've got like magnetic lines. So I thought, if they're not missing, they must still be there. So I've got to use a bit of lateral thinking and find them. So what I did was, I made a transparent photocopy put one on the other and overlaid them. And what we see is that the pattern is restored. Can you see that? I found the missing corner. Now, can you see it? It's important. Little crooked. Have I? That's okay. It's very important. Just a second. Point one of a degree and you won't see it. Very, very critical. And you'll see just what geniuses we're playing with. I can't see now because this is burning my eyes out. And I can't find my glasses without my glasses. <laughs> I'll, I'll try anyway. We're coming to a break in a second. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Now, the trouble is then, the ones at the bottom are not completed. They're skew with, they're out. So if I put them there together, you see the ones at the bottom are completed? Can you see that? They're completed now, the loops. See? And now we can see a load of pictures down that border. If I try and 